Friends, pray the Lord for again another chance. And we shall continually appreciate God for the program that brings us this message, and that is finding God. And we shall continue thanking God for finding us because his love first. And the Bible says that he first loved us and so ours is the response. Like I've already said several times and shall keep repeating it, that ours is the response to what God has already done for us. And so our finding him is responding to him for what he has done, for what he has given, and for what he still gives us as his children. And so we shall continue with our series. Now, the disciples' life is a lifetime. And so I will not give up mentioning a disciple and we shall not stop referring to the 12 disciples that our Lord Jesus Christ had in his life. And I will never forget to say that Jesus spent time with these people to influence them so that they will also go and influence the world to make a better person, to make a better child, a child to grow up into a better person that you desire. Spend time with that child. And this spending time with the person, this influencing the person is the program which we call mentorship. And I just want to take a moment with you into the mentorship program of our Lord Jesus Christ with the people, the men, the, the chosen, and including the women because the women that were actually they would wait upon them like the Martha, like Mary, like Susanna, like the others, actually kept waiting upon him because there was something that they were learning from him. And so I just want us to think very, very shortly about the program that Jesus had with the disciples, the time that he spent with them. How did he influence them? And we're just going to pick two, three things because for the period of the three years, that our Lord Jesus Christ had spent with the disciples, it was the whole time of mentoring them, of influencing them, so that they would go and influence the whole world. And this is actually the mandate that we have, that we need to be influenced by the Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ, and many of us, he has influenced us. The reason why we're able to speak about him, the reason why we, we go out and speak and witness about the love, and I mean, about the love, and the care that the favor that the Lord Jesus Christ bestows upon us. And so this time, Jesus was a giant mentor. Jesus was a great mentor, the one who influences life. And so Jesus gives us an example that in life, we need to have somebody. We need to have some people that we look up to, that will help us maneuver, go through life. Because without help, without someone showing you what to do, life can be so messy. The reason why children have to be taken to school, to be mentored there, to be helped there, so that they grow up into responsible people. Now, theologians, I mean, call them pastors, we have to go through a theological training. Take time there and polish up a little bit so that you come out a polished person, a polished preacher be helped to help, be encouraged to encourage, be taught in order to teach. And these are my daily slogans that I have in life, that you are blessed, not just to be self-contained, to keep them by yourself, but be blessed to bless. And so Jesus taught his people several things, mentoring them. And one is that, that I wanted to bring out very, very clear is to be great, you must serve. That's one of the things. Because in John, in Matthew chapter 20, verse 26, begin from verse 25, there are people who are arguing about greatness, who should be the greatest, and things like that. And they were, they were referring to other people, how they were, you know, how great they would be. And Jesus said, but Jesus called them to himself and said to them, listen, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them and those who are great exercise authority over them. We have seen world leaders exercising authority over there, you know, over those that they lead, they command, they do what? Yes, and that is what they do. And that's what maybe that's what it should be because okay, they are leaders, they are rulers, they are rulers. But in verse 26, the Bible says, 
yet it shall not be so among you. But whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant. And Jesus exemplified this. On the last night before his crucifixion in John chapter 13, he told them about service. When he came down, washed the disciples' feet. I went back to the table and sat and told them, do what I've done, what I've done to you. Do it to other people. And this is the point that we're talking about here. Now, as a mentor, our Lord Jesus Christ told them that for you to be great, you must be a servant. So whoever wants to be great, the Bible says, you must become a servant. And he gives a great secret here to greatness. Do you want to be a great person? Do you want to be an influencer? Then serve other people. Leadership is not just about rulership. Leadership, according to Jesus' model, is service to other people. And so it is a mental issue that leaders, even as we are parents, the way we are fathers, mothers, we need to mentor our children. We need to mentor, to mentor other people that are around us that be able to be mindful, to care for other people. And Jesus, the biblical way is this. And for us who are in the pastoral ministry, call me pastor, call the other person, bishop, call whoever, apostle, evangelist, teacher, it's about serving other people. So this life of the disciples that they sucked from the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm not using sucking because they looked up to him and took something from him. He mentored them to be great, he must serve. And so I pray to God to help us, you and I, who are in this ministry to serve and count not the cost. I will continue serving God. I will continue serving his people. I will continue serving my family because this is what I'm meant to be. And by, by doing that, it's elevation, is greatness. And so may you do the same in your life. And point number two, that I want to bring out among the very many things that Jesus Christ told, mentored his people upon is worry has a chore. You know we are devastated by worry. Worry, anxiety, stress. The reason why our Lord Jesus Christ took the whole session in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, and he taught them that worry has a chore. You know what kills us? Sometimes diseases, okay, mosquitoes bite us and we suffer from malaria. Sometimes you fall down and you break your leg or something. But many, many sicknesses arise from deep, deep, deep down inside us. Worry and anxiety because we have mis, uh, misdirected our efforts, misguided our thoughts. And so Jesus Christ gives them a lecture, mentoring them on worry. And he tells them, do not worry. And he says in verse 25, therefore I said to you, do not worry about your life. That's a mentoring statement. What you will eat or what you will drink, not about your body. What you will put on is not life more than food and the body more than clothing, and it goes on and on and on and on and on. My brothers and sisters, this is the point that the Lord Jesus Christ was mentoring his people to deal with the worry, to deal with anxiety, to deal with the stress. And our life is rocked by all these things. Our lives have been affected deeply by this. So take a look. Our Lord Jesus Christ tells his disciples, take a look at nature. That's why in verse 26 he says, look at the birds of the air. That's why he tells them, look at the lilies of the field, the flowers that do not make clothing, but they are so beautiful. I mean, the birds of the air, you see them flying over your head, making noise in the morning, flying about, and the Bible says that they don't sow, they don't reap, but God takes care of them. And so, what is what are we saying in the mentoring program of our Lord Jesus Christ? 
he teaches them take a look at nature and be on point look at the birds look at the leaves of the air so a mentoring statement to us is about worry this time and we take it i take it very seriously that i need to depend on my mentor on my god on my influencer in my life and you continue doing the same because that's what it requires from you and point number three that i want to point out is in his mentoring program he tells them love conquers all things the reason why he gives them the greatest commandment in matthew chapter 22 verse 36 to 40 and in matthew chapter 26 verse 36 22 verse 36 to 40 the bible does mention uh, the greatest commandment the greatest commandment 36 verse 36 he says um he tells them the greatest commandment chapter 22 verse 36 and he says okay the teacher which is great with the teacher came and said which is great with the great the commandments in the law and the, the bible says the lord told them love you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. It's a meta statement. And then he says, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophet's friends. This is a wonderful statement. And Jesus was influencing his disciples to go out and influence the world. Tell them, teach them to love one another. But above all, love God. First, love God, and then go on and love your neighbor as you love yourself. And now the first person to love is you. And then you will dispense that love to other people. And it's a mental statement, and we need to tell our children. We need to tell the, our listeners we who are in the pastoral ministry, we need to get down and tell people that okay, Jesus was mentoring the people to send them out. And the reason why in Matthew 28, 19, that I keep quoting, tells them to go ye into the world. Because he had mentored them, he had influenced them, he had taught them, he has showed them the techniques in life. So conquers all. And as he tells you to love your neighbor, he also tells you to love your enemies. How many enemies do you have in your life? And the Bible encourages us to get down and say, hey, neighbor, even if you hate me, hey, neighbor, or whoever, colleague. But sometimes it can be so hard when you need the grace of God. And this is what we're talking about, that actually allowed Jesus to give mentors his people. And the reason why, when they cut off the ear of the other man, you remember, they would Peter cut off Marcus and the man's ear. It was an enemy, but the Lord Jesus bent down and picked the ear and put it back. Love. Husband, love your wife. Wife, love your husband. Parents, love your children. Children, love your parents. Neighbor, love your neighbor. And all focused on the mentorship program of our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, I want to wind up with the following. Number four, Jesus gives his disciples, his people, his listeners, what we call the golden rule. And the golden rule is in Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. And this one is one of my favorite things, one of the favorite sayings, one of the favorite sayings of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, do unto others what you would wish them do to you. That's what we call the golden rule. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. And it is indeed a golden rule because what you desire other people to do to you, the Bible says, do it to them. He says to them, therefore, whatever you want people to do to you, also do to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Friends, God, Jesus mentors us. Jesus tells his people, exercise the golden rule. How I pray that the people in Uganda will exercise the golden rule. The leaders who are in power, would exercise the golden rule. Do unto others what you wish them do to you. Yes. Are you well? Do you have the money? What do you have? Do unto others what you wish them do to you. Are you in authority? Are you whoever? Are you in power? Are you a teacher? Are you a head teacher? Are you a manager? Are you a CEO? 
Are you a servant? Are you whoever? Do unto others what you would wish them to do to you. Grab it and do it to, the, to other people. And so the Lord Jesus Christ was mentoring, helping us to look at other people. The reason why he gave the greatest commandment, love your neighbors, you love yourself. And this one is the golden rule. Do unto others what you would wish them to do to you. And finally, because there are so many, I want to mention that ask and it will be given to you. So the Lord Jesus Christ gives us an open check. Pray the Lord. That actually ask and it will be given to you. And this is in Matthew chapter 7. Verse 7. I just want to read it and then I will wind up there. The Bible says, he was mentoring them. Go on and ask. Don't die with your need. Ask God. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone, pray the Lord, everyone who asks receives. And he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Friends, I just want to thank God. Our Lord Jesus Christ gives us. Now, the opportunity is there that you and I have to do one thing, to position ourselves and tap into what the Lord, what the Lord God wants us to tap. He says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you'll find. And in verse 8, he says, for whoever asks, receives. For whoever seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened to him. Now, friends, in this program, finding God, we are responding to God's love. We are responding to God's favor. And when he says, ask and you'll receive, it's an open check. You fill the anything that you want and you'll receive it. And so I want to thank God for this time that he has given us about the mentorship program of our Lord Jesus Christ. He influenced the people to influence others. And now if you have been positively influenced, go on and multiply and help other people. We are called upon to be witnesses of the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the disciples did exactly that. After Jesus Christ sent them, they ran, went and preached. They met difficulties. Many of them were beaten, many of them were whipped, many of them were imprisoned. Many, many, many things happened. Like we actually suffer many things, many, many atrocities in our lives. But we need to persist and insist. Like I said sometime, you see, persisting, insisting, and desisting. All those, but the life of a disciple is to learn, to pick a lesson from the master, and so that actually all is going to be well. And so my friends and my brothers and sisters, I just want to, de to dedicate you to the hands of the Lord, and that I dedicate myself, that I'll continue being a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, to be influenced to influence, to be blessed to bless, to be encouraged to encourage, to be taught to teach, and so that actually the Lord's favor will power down as rain on everyone, and all of us will be jubilating in the house of the Lord and saying, yes, he has done it for us. And testimony upon testimony, because he will have done it for you, he will also do it for me, and all of us will be jubilating. Ask and it will receive, and you will receive. Seek and you will find, knock and the door be opened to you. And may the Lord God's door remain open, and may the Lord's grace continue searching for us, and shall we continue being influenced that his grace that abounds will continue on our side and that God's favor will keep shining upon us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen and be blessed.